Joining us now to discuss all this, Theodore Katouf, former U.S. Ambassador to Syria and the United Arab Emirates. Also with us, Dr. Amy Smithson, Senior Fellow at the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies. She specializes in the study of chemical and biological weapons. Welcome to both of you to the show. It would now appear that the United States is going to go ahead with a strike against Syria. I mean, this has gone to Congress, but the president has said that even if Congress votes no, he's going to go ahead with this. The reason for the attack, we are told, is to deter and degrade President Bashar al-Assad's ability to use chemical weapons. I should add that at this stage, we do not know who used those weapons on August 21st. The administration says it was Bashar al-Assad. They haven't shown any proof. Dr. Smithson, what will, this, what will an attack do? What will the impact be? Well, the White House has rightfully taken off the target list serious chemical weapons production facilities, storage facilities, and research and development facilities because there are certain risks to attacking those sites. Most of them are located in populated areas, and with Tomahawk missiles, uh, you can't rule out the possibility that a strike would send toxic clouds over nearby civilian populations, and this would you know, cause considerable, considerable death and injury. The United States says that any attack will be legal. It is invoking something called the responsibility to protect. It has no UN backing. It has no other international backing, with the exception of France and Turkey and some other countries. Is the U.S., in your view, acting legally? You know, I'm not an international lawyer. I'm, I'm smiling because I was thinking of this David Frost interview with Richard Nixon that they've been showing since Frost died, where Nixon said, if the president does it, it has to be legal. Well, we don't really believe that in this country, although Nixon might have. So our, our president, I think, might be stretching uh, international legality when he says, if you act without Security Council, without the uh, General Assembly uniting for peace resolution, not even with the NATO or Arab League uh, authorization, uh, it's, it's a little hard to make the case. On the other hand, he's right when he says, there's a chemical weapons treaty. There's a we chemical weapons convention that goes back to the 1920s, uh, signed in Geneva. And uh, what does international legality mean if nobody upholds uh, those structures? Dr. Smithson, do you think the president has a legal right to attack Syria? Syria is a member of the 1925 Geneva Protocol, which bans the use of chemical and biological weapons. And this treaty was created because of international outrage at the widespread use of chemical weapons during World War I. Syria is not a member of the Chemical Weapons Convention, but 188 governments are. That makes it customary international law. There's no rule book out there for what to do when a state violates a treaty. For example, in 1988, when Saddam Hussein bombed his own Kurdish civilians with poison gas, the international community did not respond. We're in a different time and place right. now. I'm just wondering, does the United States just appropriate to itself the role of policemen of all these treaties around the world and says, well, if this particular treaty is not being observed, then we have the right to go and bomb that country? Well, I would hope that that not be the way that this unfolds. At present, that looks like what is happening and could actually be what does happen. I'd like to see the international community find common ground on what can be done, first and foremost, to stop the loss of life due to chemical weapons use in Syria. So there's common ground to be found, at least in some action that can be taken, to send the very clear message, regardless of who you believe is responsible for this, yeah. that use of chemical weapons in this conflict has to stop. Okay, you say send a clear message. That message appears to be, at this time, there's an assumption, though, that an attack on Bashar al-Assad would be support for the rebels. That's how it's being seen in many parts of the world. That's how it's being seen in many parts of the United States. And just let me talk about the rebels. I mean, we, we've just had a video which has just come out. We don't know, to a large extent, the numbers of rebels and which groups they belong to. They belong to disparate groups. Some of them are hostile to the United States. We do know that. Uh, this video that just came out was obtained by the New York Times. It was obtained from rebel sources, and I assume that the New York Times ascertained its uh, authenticity. Um, I, want to take, I want you to take a look at this, and then I have a question on the other side of it. Let's take a look. Yes. 
Um, now, that was a video showing rebels there executing government soldiers. These are not nice people, are they, Ambassador? Look, there aren't th that many good guys out there in the field doing the fighting right now. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is I don't think anybody has a great grasp of the composition of all the disparate uh, rebels or revolutionaries uh, fighting the Assad regime, whichever you like to call them. Uh, but we do know that there are elements of al-Qaeda because they've told us, Jabhat al-Nusra has told us they are part of al-Qaeda. Uh, and there's a number of fighters that have come in from Iraq who are al-Qaeda fighters and from Libya and from elsewhere. Uh, they happen to be the best trained, best equipped, best funded fighters out there. Uh, as I think you indicated, uh, they had something to do with uh, victories in the north uh, that could not be achieved by various groups that come under the rubric of the Free Syrian Army. Many of them are militiamen and they're part-time fighters and then they go back to being butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers. Right. Um, so it's, it's a, a very unpleasant and complex situation. We've got one-fourth of the population, either refugees outside the country or living someplace other than their homes inside the country. Uh, and frankly, I don't think the United States can make a huge difference, except around the margins, trying to discourage the use of chemical weapons. Right, that's right. Millions of people have been displaced. We know that the death toll right now is 100,000. Dr. Spencer, let me ask you this. Um, could it be possible that a rogue element in the Syrian military has possession of chemical weapons at this stage? With the early chemical incidents in Syria, where they were relatively small scale, quite frankly, my mind was open. I wasn't sure whether it was the Assad regime testing the waters, whether it was rebel forces, knowing that the international community understands Syria has a chemical weapons community uh, program, trying to point the finger at the Assad regime, or whether it could have been something uh, that was a result of a conventional bomb exploding next to uh, a university or a commercial facility that had a chemical tank and it ruptured and dispersed gas. I had an open mind at that point, but on August 21st, that all went out the window because this attack was textbook chemical warfare doctrine. These ragtag rebels don't have that type of training. The Syrian government has been in the chemical weapons business, unfortunately, since the 1970s. They've had help, by the way, from the Russians, in addition to the Iranians and the North Koreans. Uh, this was one execute this attack was executed in the early hours of the morning when the winds are lowest and the temperatures coolest and that's exactly what causes a, a gas to stay over the target a rookie would fire this stuff in the middle of the day because the winds gonna sweep it off target right. so multiple simultaneous attacks against multiple targets in the middle of the night is waddling and quacking like a trained military not like the rebels that, that's fascinating I just like to add this thought you know, Putin says, oh, Bashar wouldn't have done this. Why would he do it? He's winning. He has no reason to. Right. He knows this will bring international condemnation. I'd turn that question on its head. Why would, the, why would this administration, Obama, who is war averse, why would they cook the intelligence to show that the regime did this chemical weapons attack? Obama doesn't want to get involved. He's been trying to stay out of this well, as much as he Well, didn't he get can. involved by uh, that self-declared uh, red line that he imposed a year ago? Well, he, he was speak. look, this is an eloquent president. So when he talks about a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around, I don't think it was a well-thought-out, yeah, well-crafted statement. Right, there is also the point of credibility. I mean, we've got the United States now saying that something has to be done. We had 1,000 people being killed by chemical weapons, but we also had 100,000 people being killed by guns, bombs, and tanks. So is the message from this administration is, it's okay to kill with guns, bombs, and tanks, but as soon as you use chemical weapons, we can well, step I, in. Well, I, I think uh, Dr. Smithson made the point quite well. There is a, a convention about this because the horrors of World War I left such an impression on everyone in, around the world, including statesmen, that they crafted this Geneva Convention outlawing it. They right. didn't outlaw the use of airplanes, of conventional bombs, but they did outlaw the use of chemical weapons. But there's weapons. a moral question over 100,000 people. Absolutely, being there's a moral right. question. And I would agree with you on that. But what your viewers need to understand is that if use of chemical weapons becomes even more widespread in this conflict, the death toll will escalate 
right off the charts. It's already horrific enough. But use of chemical weapons against unprotected civilians, you'll see tens okay. of thousands die. We've got five seconds, and this is a difficult question to answer. If Bashar al-Assad is attacked by the United States, if he feels that his back up is up against the wall, that he's got no other way out, and he uses even more chemical weapons, how does the United States then react? Well, at that point, I would hope the international community would recognize who is already evidently the perpetrator of these attacks and join the United States in helping to find constructive options about how to address this. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Ambassador Dr. Smithson, thanks for joining us. So